What's going on guys? Welcome back into the channel. Today we're going to be beginning our realistic Pittsburgh Steelers franchise here on Madden 22. Now, I was deciding what team I wanted to start a franchise with. Obviously, if we start a franchise at this point, we're not going to have the scouting update. We're not going to have access to that stuff, but we will have access to the stuff that they've put into the game already for franchise mode. And so I was looking through the teams and seeing, you know, which team I think would actually be a challenge. And looking at team overalls, looking at the rosters, they actually made the Steelers one of the worst teams in the entire NFL. Now, if there's any team that's going to be a challenge to build up or rebuild or however you want to word it, um, the Falcons are probably it because I think they're the lowest overall team at a 73. But there's a lot of these teams at this 77 overall range, like the Jets. There is the Detroit Lions at a 75. But the Pittsburgh Steelers also fall into that category of a 77. And they certainly have a lot of competition in the division, with the Ravens being an 81 overall. Uh, the Browns are also pretty solid. The Bengals are tied at a 77, and they're in a position to get better because of how young they are. The Browns are an 86 with crazy off. And so I think that this is honestly a good year to go into a Steelers franchise, especially if I'm not doing too much to the roster or anything like that. So why not give ourselves a challenge, try to build this team up. We'll try to put it on some difficult settings so that we can't uh, make this team OP too quickly and stuff like that. And we'll try to play this as realistically, realistically as we can. So let's go ahead and hop into a Pittsburgh Steelers franchise and get it rolling here on Madden 22. So we have elected to go ahead and continue as coach Mike Tomlin. Now just a couple words on Mike Tomlin as a coach for the Pittsburgh Steelers. I find it very hard to believe that the organization has any intentions of parting ways with him anytime soon because he's had such a good record in the regular season. Now as a Pittsburgh Steelers fan, we're obviously spoiled. We care about playoff wins and playoff losses. We care about AFC championships and NFL championships. And Mike Tomlin has not been successful in the playoffs at all in his career outside of the early years where he was taking on the team that carried over from the, uh, the Bill Cowher era. So I personally, as a fan, would like to see a change in coaching. I know that a lot of people outside of the Pittsburgh Steelers uh, kind of see that as like... Uh, spoiled or something like that and I get it um, you know a lot of other teams would kill to have a coach like Mike Tomlin but from the Pittsburgh Steelers perspective it's just not acceptable to get your team to the playoffs and then not have them prepared and have them get blown out by the Browns or something like that you know they just they never come into the playoffs prepared under Mike Tomlin they always have their hiccups and they always basically hurt themselves and knock themselves out of playoff contention rather than giving themselves an actual chance to advance. So just a couple of words on him though, like I said, um, outside of that, I don't see the organization parting ways with him. I think the Rooney family really likes Mike Tomlin. Um, I think it would be hard to part ways with a guy that's that successful in the regular season and always gives you a chance in the postseason. So um, I think that we're just going to continue with Mike Tomlin and especially if we're going to be successfully building up this team, then Mike Tomlin would continue to uh, have you know, coaching privileges here, especially if in real life he continues to build the team up and does positive things with them. There's no reason in my mind that they're going to part ways with him. Now, off the bat, we are going to leave the roster pretty much intact the way that the game has it to try to give ourselves a challenge. And so we did go ahead and trade Joe Schobert over to the Pittsburgh Steelers for a sixth round pick this year. This is the official trade in real life. This is an absolute steal for the Steelers to add to their linebacker rotation. It just makes them a lot better on that defensive side of the ball and secures the linebacker position, especially if Devin Bush has any injury issues or just securing somebody to go alongside Devin Bush. That's a fantastic trade for the Steelers, and I think that that one's going to be crucial for their season this year because Joe Schobert is a former pro bowler and a player that is still very, very good in the NFL. So here we go at the end of preseason. We're getting one of the new situations that you get. This is a press conference to speak about a strong camp standout. 
They're saying Devin Bush has had a strong camp and has continued to build on that this preseason. Where has he improved most? And so this is where you get an opportunity to boost your player, whether that be through uh, the various choices that it gives you. I'm going to go ahead and boost Devin Bush's play recognition. I think that that is going to be most crucial for him. And you guys can see on the screen, um, it's giving a, a legitimate answer. Um, on the rise, he's received plus five play recognition. So this is a nice addition that they made to franchise mode, and I'm really happy to get that boost for Devin Bush because that's going to be absolutely huge for this team, especially with him being the core of that defense for the future. Another nice addition to the game here is that you can take players that are eligible for the practice squad if they're injured, and you can still move them to the practice squad. I don't believe that was the case before um, from my understanding and based on my experience I think you had to just uh, deal with those players or move them to the IR you can now actually move them to the practice squad move them on the IR or just leave them be so that's a nice change as well so we ended up going two and one in preseason so we'll see how that uh, plays out in terms of reflection of real life we ended up uh, getting a getting two wins there um, so did pretty well in preseason. This team did pretty solid. We do have another camp standout scenario here. Um, and this time it's going to be for, for Devin Bush again. So it looks like it's like a continued scenario. Every year there's players who ball out in preseason that don't end up doing anything once they actually, once the season starts. Never been more ready coach. I didn't put all this work in just to come up short here to make plays. So if he gets two plus combined sacks and tackles for loss with Devin Bush against the Panthers, he will continue his breakout. So this is the new addition in terms of like um, breakout scenarios is that these things can continue for uh, multiple weeks, uh, which I think that's very doable for Devin Bush. Two plus combined sacks and tackles for loss. I think we should be able to accomplish that in week one um, and hopefully continue his development. All right, so heading into the season after preseason here, this is your starting lineup. The offensive line looking very weak. Um, at right tackle, it's looking like Zach Banner uh, didn't get slotted in, but he'll be starting at right tackle for us. Pat Fryermuth at tight end. We have our receivers set. I'm going to put Chase Claypool on the outside. Najee Harris, Ben Roethlisberger, and we did move Benny Snell over to fullback, and we cut ties with Derek Watt. On the defensive side of the ball, I think this should all look familiar to you guys, and this actually looks pretty scary, to be honest with you. I feel like we're a little bit weak at the cornerback position, though last year I made Justin Lane into a pretty solid player. We'll see if we can't get contributions from any of these guys that are lower down the list, like Steven Denmark or James Pierre. Um, but I think we should be all right at cornerback with what we have around the position. Uh, so looking pretty solid here for the franchise. What we really need to do with this team, we need to work on building up the offensive line. We need to work on what we're going to do at quarterback for the future because, yeah, Ben Roethlisberger might be able to compete for us this year, but, you know, could be problematic for us once he's gone that, you know, our next best quarterback is a 63 overall. Um, I think Najee Harris is going to be the, the centerpiece of the build on offense, but there's a lot of work to be done here between adding players and player development. I'm going to be looking to try to trade away Deontay Johnson for something in return. I might be able to trade him for maybe a solid lineman or something of that nature. I don't know that that's something the Steelers would do, um, but we'll, if we do do something like that, we'll be looking for something realistic in return. We're not going to be looking for some amazing player or anything like that. Um, defensively speaking, I think that we do need to find who the next linebacker will be opposite Devin Bush, whether that be somebody on the roster that we can develop into that or not. Joe Sherbert is 27, so he can be around for a while, but I would like to have somebody developed in case one of these guys goes down with, with injury, especially considering the Steelers run primarily a 3-4 defense. And then one of our biggest issues um, is going to be our defensive back position. Clearly, we don't have a lot going on there. Joe Hayden's getting up there in age. Cam Sutton, just he's not that great. I mean, in the NFL, in real life, he might show something this year. He might turn into a really nice starter. 
Um, he might be that next guy for the Steelers. But then the other issue that I have to talk about is a lot of these guys on the D-line are old, and we don't really have much behind them on the D-line. So whether we need to develop guys, try to draft a player that can maybe slot in here eventually, there's too much age here. And if we're doing this long term, we have to consider that and understand that we need to find somebody uh, to take over here, especially considering these guys are often injured, and that's including the game. You know, when I've played with these guys, they get injured all the time, so we have to be careful there. Um, but things looking all right. I think that the team's really not that bad. We're 78 overall right now after a tiny bit of development in the preseason. Um, I'm looking forward to getting you guys some gameplay here, so uh, let's go ahead and hop into the first game of the season. So prior to jumping into this game, we're going to start off by saying that we're going defensive focus this week. We're trying to stop the run. We're trying to prevent them from uh, grinding out against us. And I think that that's pretty realistic to what the Steelers plan to do in real life. I think that we plan to try to beat teams in the trenches on defense, try to uh, get our pass rush going, set them up to have to pass and, and just unleash TJ Watt and Melvin Ingram on them as well as guys like Tuitt and Hayward who are very good interior pass rushers. So we're going to try to dominate the Bills in the trenches, which means allow less than 75 yards rushing. It shouldn't be too, too difficult from what I've seen out of the Bills, but uh, let's go ahead and jump into it. I also am really loving the ability to set who gets practice reps here so I can actually focus on which uh, players you know get the most uh, training time most experience and whatnot and you can also select the practice intensity which is going to determine how much XP you get you can see up there at the top half pads will be lower XP and game plan boost but more fatigue recovery and less injury chance so um, you know you can decide you know going between full pads and high pads what's going to work best for your team and how you can manage our overall fatigue uh, 94 percent towards the beginning of the season they're you know already starting to take a hit we're going to go full pads this week but we will as the season progresses you know switch back and forth between uh, what we do here so we're going to be playing here in Buffalo. Obviously, the Bills, one of the better teams in the NFL last season, probably going to be a tough opponent here today. We're going to be looking to stop the run um, and just test Josh Allen's arm. I think that going against this, this defense, we can give the Bills offense some trouble, and I think we should be able to move the ball on offense. This will be a good test to see whether the sliders for this, uh, for this franchise are going to need moved at all. Um, and this should help us get well on our way to developing some sliders to release for you guys for uh, franchise mode. All right, so the Bills will be getting the ball first here today. See if we can't make something happen. Looks like they're going to be passing. We'll come down and cover this route. Schobert does a bad job of getting there. Interesting that his pursuit speed was that slow. Okay, I see what's going on now. So they have our goal up there in the top right, but it's overlapping with... I was looking at this and I was a little bit confused, honestly, because I was, you know, seeing that uh, they had our player goal overlapped with the formation information. I was, like, trying to get feedback on what I needed to be calling here defensively. Fitzpatrick over a little bit. Oh, nice hit as we throw. He was able to get the ball off, though. Powered that one in there for a gain of six. We are committing to stopping the run here, but the problem is they're just throwing the football then. Nice catch there on the outside. Sanders comes back for the ball. Looks like they are going to run it. Able to come up and fill the gap. Looks like it was Cam Hayward in on the play. We got him rolling out of the pocket. He ducks out of bounds. Interesting. That's not something I think I would have seen 
in a lot of uh, Madden 21 gameplay. This is potentially a tough formation to cover. Oh man, and we shoved him off his route and he was still able to get over there and make a play on the ball. Nice throw by Josh Allen. I want to see that one again. I figured with us bumping him off his route that the the safety would have come over and reacted, but Terrell Edmonds takes the wrong angle. The ball is out of his hand at this point. Why would he turn like this? That's interesting. I don't know what's going on there. EA probably needs to fix some things with the game still, but like he's facing right here when he's he's throwing the ball. There's no reason that as that ball comes out of his hands, as he's still facing the direction of the play, that he cuts the other direction. So it looks like the, I don't know, the coverage assignment overrode his, his reaction to make a play. Like he should be coming down immediately at this ball where it's thrown and making a play and making that tackle at least before he gets in the end zone, if not breaking up that pass. So interesting thing there. We go down 7 to nothing here early in the first quarter. Nice pass by Allen um, and nice play by Diggs to get that touchdown. Najee Harris's first run is going to go for one yard. Trying to get the ball outside there on that one. Not very successful. Ooh, and that ball intended for Juju ends up getting picked up by Chase Claypool. I'll take the reception at least. That's going to be a gain of... 11 yards and pick up a first down for us. Eric Ebron in the game. Pat Fryermuth also over there. Ben Roethlisberger able to hit his target. Looks like he might be a little bit inaccurate today, uh, but we do get a gain of seven. Pat gets the catch. I might just call him Pat, to be honest with you, until I figure out what his name is. I haven't had a chance to look yet. Najee Harris going to power forward, try to get two yards. That'll bring up a third and one situation. And so this is a perfect situation for Benny Snell to get a handoff if we have a fullback dive. I guess we don't out of single back, so we would have to go goal line to do it. We'll give Benny Snell this one. Najee Harris, I know, is a... Uh, inside back and he can absolutely get that yard but might as well use the the Benny Snell that we moved over there specifically for that reason we're gonna go with the PA boot on this one they do have the uh, they do finally have nice catch Claypool Claypool kind of teleported over for that one but Ben Roethlisberger threw it a little bit inaccurately what I was going to say is they do finally have the pistol formations in here that, uh, that Ben Roethlisberger likes to use quite a bit in this offense. So I can tell the trouble for us is going to be the offensive line blocking. Um, clearly against stout defenses, it's going to be an issue. Najee's going to struggle to get yardage behind this offensive line and that's kind of I mean honestly I think that's going to be the real life result and I kind of figured that's what's going to happen whenever they get into games this season because you know you don't address the offensive line position yeah that's it's great and all that you drafted a halfback but like my point was the entire time hey you should probably be drafting offensive linemen to make sure that you can at least run the ball. Drafting a halfback is not going to matter if you can't run the ball. And Jordan Poyer does a nice job there of getting the interception on Ben Roethlisberger. A bad throw on my part into coverage, uh, but he overshot his receiver a little bit on that one as well. Good hit by Minka Fitzpatrick. Comes down and makes the hit stick tackle. That'll bring up a second and one situation. And this safety over a bit. We got coverage over the top, and Sutton's going to come down with the interception, and he might get a pick six. I think he's got the speed to return it. Cam Sutton evens this game up. What an absolute play by the, what, second-year, third-year cornerback 
hasn't gotten a ton of playing time for this defense, comes up immediately and gets an interception. I don't know why Allen threw that ball the way he did. That's double coverage. Good reaction by Sutton to go up and get the ball. And then the, per, the, uh, the skills to bring it back and return it for a touchdown. Outran everybody and ties this game up. And Sutton made the nice play for the interception the last time around, but he gets burnt in man coverage on Diggs. Unfortunately, we didn't have any safeties over the top. We were covering underneath, and the Buffalo Bills do a very good job of reading what we were giving them on the defensive side of the ball. And they go over top for the touchdown and go up 14-7 to here with six and a half minutes left in the first half. We are actually getting some pretty solid blocking out of our offensive line on this drive. We are now up to the 40-yard line with a lot of running behind Najee Harris. Now, Kalen Balaj is going to come into the game and get himself some running reps. And uh, this is another big-bodied running back. He only picks up two on that one. Um, but this is, again, going to put us in a short yardage situation. I am this time going to go out of the eye form. And we, we are going to hand it off in an ISO to uh, Harris. This time, maybe they'll be thinking we go fullback, and instead we go ISO. He does pick up the first down, gets another four yards. You guys can see nine rushes for 40 yards so far on the day. Uh, so a lot of ground and pound for us so far. Uh, we've been pretty effective with it. We're going to go 95 Mike on this one. Oh, great blocking. I should have stiff-armed there. I don't know why I tried to truck. That's a really great run by Najee. Take us down to the 24-yard line. Get us in good position here to try to tie this game up at the very least. I think they're leaving Friermuth open. We'll see if we can't get him on this streak. They do leave him open, and that's going to be his first touchdown as a Pittsburgh Steeler. As we hit the two-minute warning, we are going to tie this game up and the team celebration is absolutely fantastic hopefully we can see more of this this season pat fryermuth does a great job on this route aware enough to turn his head and get that ball ben roethlisberger puts the ball where it needs to be between the defense and we capitalize on the breakdown in coverage we just need to get something going with our defense here uh in this uh second quarter hopefully yes and there it is we get the sack ingram the new Pittsburgh Steeler gets our first sack of the season and backs them up to a second and 21. We're going to go man coverage here. Um, and I'm just going to user cover Bush. Actually, no, I'm just going to flip it. So there we go. This is the rush. Bush is in man coverage, which is what I wanted to see. Cam Sutton was almost in position to get that interception. They are going to pick up quite a bit of yardage. We're going to go zone coverage here, though, third and six situation. We're going to go Cam Hayward off of this edge. We do get him scrambling, and that's going to be a pick. Antoine Brooks Jr., of all people, gets the interception for us. The backup safety, who I didn't really even expect to get us much playing time, comes in the game and gets an interception. And not only that, puts us on the 50-yard line in position to potentially get a score here to take a lead before halftime. Najee Harris out there on the screen. We do get a little bit of a chip block. We'll use our first timeout. Honestly, I think they're leaving it open again for the tight end, so let's see. They're not. We'll dump it off to Najee. He gets a little bit of a truck going. Gets us down into uh, field goal territory. We do want to attack the sideline here, so I'm thinking maybe Juju, maybe Claypool coming across. This is a pretty solid play for a situation like this. We do find Claypool on his route. I might have to, yeah, we're going to have to take the time out there because otherwise a lot of that clock is going to run off. We could go field goal. I don't think we need to go field goal. I think we should go shotgun and try to maybe hit something further downfield. Why sail to the tight end might work. And we might as well put Claypool on like a streak or something into the end zone. 
Actually, let's toss it up. Oh, we had Claypool in a one-on-one -on -one matchup out there. Let's go red zone scissors this time, see if Najee can't get open. He is open. And that's going to be a touchdown. Oh, he gets knocked out at the one. I should have dove. I should have dove for the touchdown. That takes us down to the one yard line. What do we want to do? We could run, which would be a risk. We could inside zone it, maybe. Oh, I don't know. I think we go pass. I think we have to go pass. Just for the safety of it, potentially. Just do quick slant. And Claypool does get the touchdown. Our big bodied receiver in the end zone puts us up by a touchdown at half. What a play. What a drive, both defensively and offensively, having a really great game so far. I do appreciate the fact that they give us legitimate replays this year. That was pretty nice. I like being able to see that uh, replay over again. We do get the ball here to start off the second half, so at this point it becomes a matter of controlling the clock, controlling time of possession, and grinding out this game to try to get away with a victory. We will want to put some points on the board here on this drive to cement our lead. Um, but like I said, it does become a matter of making sure that we just keep possession of the football. We're going to put Juju on a curl route here. Oh, man, we did have a man open deep. Najee going to break a tackle, though, and gets us up too close to the 50-yard line, up to the 44. We are going to run this one to the left side. I wish I had a stretch play, because if I could just run a stretch to the left side, that would be a touchdown. Najee not going to pick up the first. We could go with a field goal here on fourth and one, but I think we go for it. Yeah, they're telling us to go for it as well. We might fool them here. I think I'm going to go with this mesh play. Oh, and a broken up pass. So they do do a good job of covering the mesh play that works for us very often. And so that's going to set the Bills up with an opportunity here to try to tie the, tie the game. And Minka Fitzpatrick is going to go down with an injury as they approach the goal line. So unfortunate one there for us. Uh, you can definitely tell that our defensive backs outside, you know, on the, you know the uh, the actual cornerbacks have been an issue for us today. There you go. Hollister gets the touchdown. Uh, Fitzpatrick is a medium injury risk. I think that we are going to just have the backup come back in. We don't want anybody getting re-injured at this point in the season. That could be very detrimental to us for the season. So, unfortunately, that fourth down call, which we probably should have taken the field goal or maybe should have ran up the middle with Najee Harris, unsuccessful. Um, now we're in a tie football game as we approach the fourth quarter. We are getting the ball so we can eat some clock and hopefully go downfield and score a touchdown and put ourselves in a good position to win this football game. Um, but uh, didn't uh, do ourselves any favors there. And Deontay Johnson, surprise, surprise, drops a catch, which could have set us up with good field positioning. So um, unfortunate there. I think they may have programmed him to actually drop footballs like he does in real life. Najee, though, going to do it for us, gets us the first down and keeps this drive moving on a third and long. Najee is over 100 yards on the day. He has been doing a fantastic job of just continuing to truck along and put this team in a position to uh, win this game. Ben Roethlisberger going to take off and slide, picks up the first down.
And Sutton is going to come up with another interception that's going to put this game away. We were only able to get the field goal, and Josh Allen drops back to pass and throws a duck right to Sutton, who gets his second interception of the game, his second pick six of the game. What a play out here on the outside by Sutton. Comes down, gets the user interception, and returns another one for a touchdown. So the defense carrying us to victory today. Three minutes left on the clock. I'll bring you guys back in if anything else interesting happens. And that'll do it for us, guys. We'll come away in this one with the 34-21 to victory. Starting off our season right against a tough opponent. Uh, here is the tale of the uh, the stat sheet. So Ben Roethlisberger, 13 of 20, two touchdowns and one interception. That's a very Ben Roethlisberger-esque type of game. Rushing-wise, Najee had 30 attempts for 129 yards, 4.3 yards per carry. No touchdowns, unfortunately, but did very well in that regard. From a receiving perspective, Chase Claypool had... Uh, six receptions for 45, Harris had five for 75, Friermuth had two for 31, and the other receivers didn't even get involved. Deontay had one drop, um, so that one was uh, a bit of a problem for us. Sacks, we only had one sack out of the backup tackle, Dan Moore, once uh, Chikuma went down, and then left guard Kevin Dodson did get a pancake. Defensively speaking, um, not a whole lot to note tackle-wise. Joe Schobert led the team in tackles, two tackles for loss for Melvin Ingram, so unfortunately we didn't get our two for Devin Bush that we needed um, to uh, to get his development continuing. TJ Watt and Melvin Ingram both had a sack, and then interception-wise Cameron Sutton and Antoine Brooks Jr. all had those interceptions. And the important thing to note here, I think, is the return yardage and the two touchdowns from Cam Sutton. So he's looking like a potentially very good cornerback for us. Very happy to have him on the team. Quite a few upgrades after today's game, but that'll do it for today's video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed, and hopefully you guys are looking forward to more from a Pittsburgh Steelers franchise here on the channel. If you are, leave a like on the video, comment down below, and subscribe to the channel if you're new. I'll see you in the next one, and I hope you have a good one.